What's up, y'all? This is DJ Triple Nine. I'm uh, throwing this video up on YouTube for you guys today to show you how to hook up the Maya 44 USB with the uh, latest generation MacBook, the Unibody. Um, I've broken this up into three parts just because I can't get it all in one 10 minute YouTube video. So please feel free to continue on to some of the other ones as we move forward. Um, basically, I'm going to start out with talking about the equipment we're going to be setting up today, uh, as well as getting the Maya 44 plugged in, configured, and so on. Next up, I'm going to show you you guys how to configure the time codes uh, get those working kind of do some troubleshooting show you some things and then uh, lastly I'm gonna do a little set for you guys to show that the time code signals are strong and everything works the way you want it to so uh, you could use this thing in a club uh, well let's go ahead and get to it um, first we've got the MacBook here uh, just your typical 13.3 inch model. This isn't the Pro, uh, but they do share the same motherboard. Nothing too uh, different there. I have upgraded this to 4 gigs of RAM. Um, I highly recommend you do that. Uh, I am also running the larger power supply that comes with the MacBook Pro, but that just allows me to charge things a little quicker. Um, no other fancy add-ons there. What you see is what you get. Um, over here, as you can see, We've got the Maya 44 USB. Uh, bought this online. I think I paid about $75 for it. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a hybrid setup today, a little, little out of the ordinary. I've got a Newmark CDX on the right, uh, basically just a CDJ with a direct drive turntable with some virtual vinyl on top. Uh, gives you the look and feel of vinyl with... Uh, without the limitations of having to swap out your needles or having to carry around a crate of records. Um, support CDs as well as MP3 CDs. Uh, pretty nice unit. Um, recommended over the Pioneer actually. Uh, but of course everyone has their own personal preference. Um, over here, got a Newmark TTX. Uh, nothing too special about this bad boy. The thing's a tank. Uh, runs like a champ. Uh, really like this thing. Uh, it's actually got a BPM counter in it if you ever do run true vinyl on it. Of course, we're using time codes today. Uh, I'm running the uh, Ortofon uh, digital cartridges. Um, I'm running the standard car cartridge, not the Concords. Uh, don't think it really makes much of a difference to me. Uh, we will be using Serato Scratch Live Vinyl today. Um, Newmark Q Vinyl and, uh, and such is a little hard for me to get a hold of up here in the Northwest. Scratch Live is everywhere works just as well and uh, it is supported in relative mode which we'll uh, talk about a little bit later alright so uh, I'm gonna be pretty quick on how to put this thing together because I assume you guys know what you're doing um, basically everything coming off the decks goes into your analog input into your first four channels um, er the last four channels uh, basically your analog out go into your mixer I'm running a new Mark C3FX. We're going to be doing our stuff off of uh, channels two and three, and uh, I, I assume you guys know how to use a mixer. If not, you probably shouldn't be in the DJ business. All right, so let's go over to the computer. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to hook up. Uh, we're going to—I should say—we're going to download the Maya 44 control panel. I've already done it. It may be on the CD that came in with your unit. Didn't come with mine. Um, let me go ahead and turn off this backlight so you get a little bit better view here. But a pretty straightforward interface. Nothing fancy here. Um, there are no drivers to download for Mac. No drivers to install. All the control panel does is uh, manage the card for you. Um, it emulates ASIO off the core audio, which is uh, native to Apple. One thing you may want to do is uh, go into your preferences in the file menu and set it to uh, restore save values at startup. This is just going to remember where your sliders are at. Um, one thing to note, if you unplug this device and plug it back in, um, you're going to have to wiggle these sliders back and forth a little bit so that it can uh, jog the memory of the unit. But um, our monitors, make sure we have both of those muted. It doesn't really matter where they're at because we're not using them. Uh, input. Uh, make sure that it's ganged. If it's not ganged, your time codes are going to be out of sync and stuff's just not going to work right. So definitely make sure that the bottom checkbox is ganged for input and output. Coming in, uh, I recommend you set it at about 
30%. If you run exclusively CDJs, um, probably set that down to 25% because you're gonna have a really strong signal and you don't need that much juice to get the time code going on. If you're running vinyl, especially if you're running a really old turntable or you're running torque vinyl, which happens to be pretty quiet, um, you're probably gonna wanna crank that puppy up to about 50%, but very rarely do you need to go above that. Output for maximum performance, I go ahead and crank that thing up to about 90%. Um, I don't crank it to the max just because I'm uh, I'm a little old school and I get a little paranoid when things are completely maxed out. Once that's all set, um, you can go ahead and close it. I'm going to leave it in the background for now. Uh, the next step is to go to your audio MIDI setup for your uh, Macintosh. The way you get to that is you go to Finder, then go to Applications, and under the Utilities folder, the third one down is your audio MIDI setup. Pretty easy to get to. Once you double click on that, you'll uh, get a menu like this. You're going to want to go up to the files, go to audio, and open the aggregate device editor. Aggregate devices is probably empty unless you've already set something up there. If you have, no big deal. We're not going to be affecting that. Go ahead and hit the plus sign to add your aggregate device. Uh, at this point, you can rename it if you want. I like to leave it as it is, and that's what we're going to do today. Um, after that, you'll come down here to structure. You'll notice that this has now become populated. You're going to want to choose the Maya 44 USB with the 4 in. Go ahead and check that. You'll notice up here now we've got in a 4. Then we're going to choose Maya 44 USB for our 4 output. And now we've got our 4 out. So once this is done, you should have 4 in and 4 out. Make sure your clock is set to the in and not the out. Um, that's why we did the uh, input on the first shot and did the output on the last. It automatically does it for you. Once everything looks good, go ahead and hit done. Next step, which I don't see in the forums, which I recommend you guys do, because if you don't, it's probably not going to work, is to go to configure speakers. Um, it automatically sets it in stereo, which doesn't really make any sense considering we're running a four channel audio device. So we're going to set it to quadraphonic. Um, that lets you know that we are in fact dealing with the four channel sound card. Uh, one, two, three, and four, you can accept the defaults. Hit apply. Go ahead and hit done. So now the Maya 44 USB is all set and ready to go. Um, again, this is pretty straightforward. There's a step I threw in there that you probably didn't see in the forums. Uh, but every step I've done here is absolutely critical to get things working. Um, this is the point where I'm going to go ahead and end the first video. Um, feel free to move on to the second. If you guys have any questions at this point, feel free to shoot me an email at dj at dj999.com or just catch me on the virtual DJ forum.